Hello, Integrated Math 1. Welcome to Mr. Schultz's math class. Today we're going to be dis discussing 10.2 points, lines, and planes. Make sure you write your first and last name at the top, as well as your period number. Once again, we're talking about points, lines, and planes. Now, before we jump into that, we can talk about axioms and postulates. We're going to be jumping into proofs about more specifically on using geometry proofs. So, for example, a postulate. We have the segment addition postulate right here. So, segment addition postulate. Postulate. That's if we have a line. We have A, B, and C, let's say that's 4 and that's 10, A, B, well, let's make that look a little bit better, A, B plus B, C will equal line segment A, C. So 4 plus 10 equals 14. That's, we don't need to prove that. We understand that this plus this is equal to the whole thing. So that's a postulate. Now, the, the next part right here is a theorem. So a theorem, for example, we have talked about the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to write Pith theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem is basically, hey, we have a right triangle. The square of one side plus the square of the other side is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, or A, B, C. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Now, these need to be proven. Now, we know that, like now, they've been proven, so we tend to use them, but we have to be able to prove them first in order to use them. At the moment, you're like, well, they've already proved them. Why do I need to do it again? Well, this is basically, we are going through the motions and we are understanding how do we prove things? How do we justify what we say? So, one of our presidents actually did this. So, I'm going to put Garfield. And that's not the cat. That's the president Garfield. He has his own proof. It's using a trapezoid. And so they make things equal to each other, and they're like, hey, because this is true, and this is true, and this is true, then we understand that this is true. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So we'll get to that when we get to that. But let's go on. So we're going to learn about a whole bunch of different terms in geometry. For example, a point is going to be an exact location. So this could be like x comma y. Like an example could be like, hey, 3 comma 4. So in this situation, be like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's right here. Now this is in two-dimensional space. In three-dimensional space, you know, we could be like, hey, x comma y comma z comma, or no, in parentheses. And so we'd be like, all right, here's the x, here's the y, here's the z. But we're not going to get to that yet. But there is an, a point in two-dimensional space and a point in three-dimensional space. All right. A line. A line goes forever in both directions. So, you know, we could have it going forever in these two directions. Now, lines are going to go forever, and then, like, if you spin it, you could spin this, and it'd be going forever in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, in this direction. In fact, right here, you can see, hey, we have a whole bunch of lines going in different directions. We just have to be specific and say, hey, it's going, we want to talk about this line. So, like, the definition of a line is like if you have two points, there's only one line that goes 
through those two points. Let's go on. So a plane. Now, right now, go ahead and put your hand down on your desk and feel that desk. It has, it is flat. Now, let's say you're leaning back or something like that, or lean to the side. Now, that if you continued that forever, then it would go forever in that direction. Technically, if I draw this little desk right here, technically the plane would go forever in four different directions. It would go forever straight, forever to the left, forever to the right, and forever behind. It would go through you, through the wall, through your neighbor's house, through all the way to school. It would go for forever. Um, I think I remember, you know, watching some horror film and, like, they had, like, lasers and it would, like, it sliced through, like, at this level or something like that. One, don't watch those movies, but two, that is a plane and it goes through forever at that slope. Now, there could be multiple planes stacked upon each other. Like, say, for example, hey, look, we have a plane like this. And then above it, parallel to it, we have another plane. They never touch. Sometimes planes will touch. And so, like, you'll have an example of that is, hey, look at your wall. Look at your ceiling where they touch. That's a connection of two planes. There we go. A connection of three planes would be the corner of your room where the wall on the wall and on top the ceiling or on bottom the floor. Now here's a, a nice joke, an appropriate joke for you guys. If you're ever cold, just go to the intersection of uh, two walls because it must be warm there because it's 90 degrees. All right, let's go on. So space. Now in space, this is, you know, when we deal with it more in integrated too, but space is we have our X, we have our Y, and pretend this is flat, you know, on the table. You have X, and you have Y, and you're like, all right, cool. Coming straight up and straight through it, we have the Z. This is going to be our three-dimensional, 3D space. And you're going to have points. You're going to have the X, the Y, and the Z location identifiers. And we label them like this, X, comma, Y, comma, Z. And we have a origin. The origin is where those number lines meet. All right. Collinear. So, jumping into collinear. If we have a line with collinear, collinear tells us that, hey, we're going to have points that are on the line. So let's say we have A, B, and C, and D. A, B, and C are collinear. Now, D is not collinear to all those points, but technically, there is a line that would go through D at each of these points. So it will be collinear to each of those separately, but not all together. Next up, coplanar. Now, coplanar is going to be, you have the desk, and right on the desk, you put some points. Pretend you're putting some quarters or some pennies or whatever. Each of these points, and heck, it could be even a line on top of or within the plane. Each of those are going to be on the same plane. Oh, let's fix that same plane and so this is on the same line 
All right, so that's our vocabulary. So now we're going to go on and we're going to do a couple of these problems. I'm going to leave it, some of them for you to do. So let's go on. So example one, name lions and plants. So it says name the lions that are only in plain Q. So I look at this and I'm like, all right, which one is plain Q? Well, I see this one. So I wouldn't say this line M, or maybe I'm going to call this, nope, line P. Line P is on both planes. So I won't use that. But I see that I have line N and line Q. So I use my handy dandy text box and I would state, hey, lines N and Q are only in plane Q. There we go. So it says how many planes are labeled in the figure. Now, this is important because there are technically, like if we have a piece of paper, this is a plane. And there could be a plane that goes like this. With so many, well, not one, but a multitude. Even if we did 360 degrees, or even 180 because we're going, you know, like halfway, there are a multitude of planes that would be encompassing it. Just think of, of, a, of a piece of paper. If I change the angle compared to the camera, it's a new plane. So if I look at any of these, I could have, like I would technically have planes all the way across. So here's a plane, here's a plane, here's a plane, here's a plane, here's a plane. Here's a plane. But they're not labeled. So that's the main thing. We understand that there's a multitude of planes, but they're not labeled. So looking at this, it looks like I have plane R and Q. So I'd say there are two planes labeled. And then I'd, I'd be specific and say R and Q. There we go. So name the plane containing the lines N and T. Well, I just look and I see, hey, look, it's this one right here, plane R. So I'll type plane R contains the lines M and T. So for each one of these, just read it and figure it out. All right, so we're going to continue on in three, two, one. So each of these asks some questions. Go ahead and ask me for help in class. But we're going to go on and discuss example two. So name the geometric terms modeled by each object or phrase. Like for the first couple, hey look, the tabletop. Look, the tabletop, you know, if I draw it, or even if I'm like, hey look, I'm gonna draw it right here, it's gonna be a plane because it is more than just Two dimensions. Well, it's more than one dimension. It's going to be two dimensions. We have an X and a Y, but that's it. There's no height to it. So it's a plane. Now this bridge, I know it curves, but you know, it's going to be a line. So it says a roof of a house support beam. All right. So that's you know. Talking about this, I'm like, all right. And if it continues this way, this way, and this way, and this way forever, I mean, that's a plane. It expands. Let's go on. So each one of these, you can just do a quick little, like, I think it's this, I think it's this. Now, the one problem we're going to see is we're going to see for problem number 14, you're going to see, hey, we need to change something. 
kind of like 12 when we have two planes that meet. So we have the wall, and this is exactly like number 12. And then we have this, they're saying, hey, what happens right here? So where does it, when it meets, what is this shape that is produced? Well, that's going to be a line. Now we're not going to say, hey, it's two planes. What do the two planes create? The intersection is a line. So that's like number 12 right here. Hey, this right here, where the two planes meet, they make a line. So for these, you're going to make, you're going to want to make sure that you like, all right, so we have this table and they want to know, hey, what does this edge of the table make? Well, if you look at a table, <laughs> what does this make? Technically, only a line. All right, go ahead and try these out. And if you get stuck, ask me in class. All right, guys, what's going on? So, for the next couple, you're going to try to just, you know, draw and label the figures, just like we're doing. It says points X and Y lie on line C. Okay, well, here's, I'll go like this. And I know I have, this is my line C, D. It says X and Y, it on it. X, Y. Points X and Y lie on C, D. That's it. We're just going to draw an example. All right, two planes that don't, don't intersect. Now, just like your classroom or where you live, hopefully, <laughs> the two planes I'm about to discuss never intersect. And that's a ceiling and the, the floor. If they ever intersect, you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> Because, like, they won't intersect because they're being held up. So, this one and this one do not intersect. And why do they do that? Because they, you know, they're P, or they're what? They're parallel. All right, let's go on. So, just draw and give an example of the situation. That's what you have to do for these ones. Let's go on. Now, this last one, example four. Oh, there's actually example five. So let's do this. So basically, how many planes are shown in the figure? Like, let me do the first one for you. Well, I see I have A, B, E, F, this one right here. So it looks like this. So A, B, so planes. A, B, E, F. And then it looks like I have this one. And that's going to be B, C, D, E. Then I have in the back of it. That's A, C, D, F. A, C, D, F. Then I have this top part of it. E, D, F. All right, E, D, F. Then I have the bottom part of it. And I don't need to call it, I could either call it A, D, C, but it has its own name, so I'm going to call it W. But it could be A, B, C. Now for the next question, it asks, how many of the planes contain points F and E? Okay, well, first off, how many planes are shown? One, two, three, four, five, five. Well, now this. How many planes contain points F and E? Okay, F and E. So that's one. E, F, no. E, F, no. E, F, two. So, two planes. And let's name them. A, B, E, F, and E, D, F. There we go. So once again, you guys are going to just answer the questions.
Now we're hitting that 20 minute mark, so let's try to get this done ASAP. So once again, for the next ones, like example five is just, hey, we have a real world situation. One thing I would say, hey, maybe we should draw it out. So here's the surface of the lake. And we have a fishing line that cuts through it. Just pretend that we have, so it cuts through it. What's this right here called? That's all it's asking. Not, not this line. What is this connection called between a line and a plane? Go ahead and answer that. And so you have the these next few one next two two questions. Create three planes that intersect at a point. So it's a drawing exercise. And then we have a finding plane error exercise. You know this was a long video, but we're gonna have a day or two to finish it. Go ahead and work with your group to make sure you get these done ASAP. Alright guys. I'll catch you in class, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.